Today I'm so excited because I'm bringing you along in my Shabbat prep to cook and bake with me my go-to super easy Moroccan Shabbat menu as it is fast and delicious. I will also share many of my family cooking secrets including my Moroccan fish, delicious meat, seven salads and a very special dessert prepared by our daughter and so much more. If you're new here, hi, my name is Sarah Malka and on my channel I share all facets of my orthodox Sephardic Jewish life as a full-time working mom with small kiddos. So don't forget to leave this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Let me put on a pretty tickle and let's jump into it. If you've been here for a while, you know that one of my favorite mantra is work smarter, not harder. So I will put and regroup all my dishes that can be baked at the same time and at the same temperature. So I will peel three to five garlic heads and five shallots and I place them in a baking pan. I will cover them with olive oil. I will also add some salt and then I will put it aside. I take my eggplants out of the refrigerator and the way I choose my eggplants in the store to make sure it is the sweetest is that I will look for the eggplants with the skin that is nice and smooth and very dark as well as the belly button that is very narrow. After washing the eggplants, I will take one and I'll cut it in thick slices. I will cut it again but this time I will form about one inch cubes with the eggplants. I put them in my baking pan lined with a reusable silicone mat. Then I add some salt, paprika, garlic. I drizzle on them a bit of olive oil. I mix everything with my hands. Then I add some tomato paste. Then I mix everything again. I spread the eggplant on the baking sheet equally to form one single layer. Then I will put the baking sheet aside. I take my other eggplant and I will cut it in half. I remove the top part of both pieces of eggplant. Then with my paring knife, I will make X's on the inside of the eggplant and I will do four X's per side. I push my finger in the X and then I will insert half a clove of garlic in each hole. I will repeat the same process on both sides. I put my eggplants face down on the reusable silicone mat in the baking dish. Then I will drizzle them with olive oil. I flip them and I add more oil. I put them back face down on the baking dish and I will put them away. I take my beets and as you can see they are quite dirty and I'm going to give them a good brush bath. I love to see them become the better version of themselves, all shiny and appetizing. I will put the beets, once that they are fully clean, in salted water and I will cook them covered until for tender about 30 minutes. I take out my bell peppers and after verifying that there's no insects on their surface, I will clean them and cut them in two, place them face down on a cookie sheet lined with a silicone mat, drizzle on them some olive oil, once that it is done, I am going to take the tray and put it directly on the first or top rack of my oven. Then on the second rack, I am going to take the eggplant and garlic confit. And finally, on my special bottom rack, I am going to put my tomato and eggplant salad. And I will let everything bake for 15 to 20 minutes and I will keep an eye on everything. While everything is baking, I do my chukchuka or salad cuit, some will call it matbucha. So in a large pan, I'm going to put two cans of diced tomatoes. Once the two cans are in, I'm going to add some paprika. Then I will press my garlic, about four to six cloves, depending on how garlicky you want your salad cuit to be or how much you want to be protected against vampires. And of course, I use garlic powder if I do not have fresh garlic. I mix everything. 
Then I'm gonna add some olive oil. I mix everything again and I will put it directly on the stovetop on medium heat. I cover it with the splash guard and I have no clue if the little feet should go up or turn the other way. Maybe you know, please let me know in the comments below. While our matbucha is cooking, I will start our Moroccan carrot salad. I peel them and cut them and I put them in a steaming basket. Then I transfer them in a pot a quarter filled with salty boiling water and I will cook them for about four to five minutes or until fork tender. Our chupchuka is already simmering, so I will give it a good stir and I will decrease the heat to medium low until all the water evaporates and it gets a deep red color, which will take about 10 to 15 minutes. By now the garlic is baked, so I will take it out of the oven and I will let it cool down. It has been already a few minutes and I will verify if my carrots are cooked. And the telltale sign to tell me that they are done is when I can insert the tip of my knife in the carrot like this. I will drain the carrots and this is what I love about the steaming basket is that it acts as a sieve too. I will leave in the description box below a link for the steaming basket. I will keep the carrot under very cold water to stop their cooking process otherwise they would become bushy. When the carrots are cold to touch, I will transfer them and leave them drain fully on the pot. By now the eggplant and tomato salad is also cooked and I will take it out of the oven and I will let it cool down. While the salads are cooling down, I will start my Shabbat meat and today I'm going to do my family's favorite Moroccan dish called tagine de veau aux abricots et prune servie sur un lit de couscous parfumé. Usually it is made in a special cookware called tagine, but somebody in my family broke it so I'm going to do it in a heavy bottom pot. I will add my oil as well as my chopped onions and will mix everything until every piece of onion is fully coated with the oil. I will add my cumin mix it in and then I will add my cinnamon, mix it in again and finally I will add my ginger. The reason why I'm cooking my spices is to revive the taste in them for the taste to be more present in the recipe. Finally I will add my honey and here's a hack I wanted to share with you. Before I pour my honey in any measuring device I lightly spray it with oil and the honey glides right off giving me a perfect measure every time. I add my tablespoon of coriander, but it is absolutely optional. I will mix everything until fully combined and I will let it bloom covered on low heat for a few minutes. I take out my bell peppers from the oven when I see they are soft and charred on top. I put them in a bowl when they are still piping hot because it will create steam when I will cover them, which will make my bell peppers sweat and will make peeling them afterwards so easy. I put them aside until they are completely cooled down. While the bell peppers are sweating, I will start my Moroccan fish. In a preheated pan, I add my olive oil, finely diced onions, pressed garlic. I mix everything and let it cook uncovered until golden. I take out my eggplant from the oven and I will transfer it right away in a sieve. I'm going to make sure to press down the eggplant to let out a maximum of water. Already after a few seconds there is quite a bit of liquid. I will let the eggplant drain fully and I will go back to my Moroccan fish. I will add some paprika, then some coriander, some sea salt. I will mix everything together. And then I am going to add my red bell peppers, mix everything again, add some tomato paste, and you guessed it, we're going to mix again. And finally, I'm going to add my water, mix everything again, then add my green olives, which are absolutely optional, my chickpeas, which are canned chickpeas for today, I will mix everything until fully incorporated and finally I will add my slices of lemon. I will let it cook for about 5 to 10 minutes covered. By now the beets have completely cooked and I'm going to let them cool down until we can do the next step. While the beets are cooling down, I will start my dafina or Moroccan cholent that I will make in the oven today but I also use the same recipe on the stovetop. 
I will peel about two pounds of baby potatoes and yes, it takes forever, but I think we show our love to our family when we prepare food they love. So for me, I'm telling them with every single baby potato I'm peeling, I love you. How about you? What do you think? Do you think we can show love through food? Let me know in the comments below. I add them to a heavy bottom pot. Then I'm going to add some oil. Mix everything together to make sure that every potato is coated. And then I will put it aside to go back to my salmon. I add a generous amount of honey to my fish and in a pinch I will absolutely use some sugar. Then I'm going to reserve a few tablespoons of sauce on the side. Then I will add my piece of fish. I'm going to make sure when I add them to leave a certain space between them. Then I will add the sauce that I have reserved. I'm going to put everything on top. Once that it's done, I'm going to cover it and let it cook no more than eight to 10 minutes until flaky. By now my spice and onion mix for the veal is nice and golden. I add two pounds of meat. Here I will use veal, but sometimes I use beef or lamb to make a lamb or beef tagine. Then I will mix everything in. I will then add one and a half cup of water. Then mix everything together. Then I will let it come to a small boil. I will mix it again to make sure the meat is completely coated with the sauce. Then I will cover it and let it simmer on medium heat for about 20 minutes. I add to my dafina some chickpeas that I spread at the bottom. Then I'm gonna add my meat. Here I'm using veal shank. I'm going to add my eggs that are previously cleaned and my rule of thumb is to add one egg per person. I put my pot aside and then I will start my spice slurry. In a bowl I add paprika, cumin, curcuma and salt. I'm gonna add some water. Then I'm gonna mix everything. Then afterwards, I'm going to add my tomato paste. I'm going to add some date syrup. And if I don't have date syrup, I'm going to add two to three verified dates. I'm going to mix everything until fully incorporated and I'm gonna set it aside. In my cooking bags, and you were so many to ask questions, no, they are not Ziploc bags. And if you can't find them, you can use crock pot liners or cotton bags. I'm going to put my verified rice as well as my verified wheat kernel. In my wheat kernels, I'm gonna put some soup base as well as paprika. Then I'm gonna add some salt in both bags. Then afterwards, I'm gonna add some garlic powder as well as some hot paprika in my wheat kernel. The main advantage of using these bags is that I can create so many different flavors in my dafina. After adding oils in both bags, I'm going to add one and a half cup of water per cup of rice in my rice bag, take out the air and then make a loose knot, mix everything. And then in my wheat kernel bag, I'm going to put two cups of water per cup of wheat kernel. Once again, I am going to remove the air from the bag. This way I'm sure it will not burst open while it's being cooked. I make a slight knot, mix everything again. And once that is done, I'm going to place it in the pot to cover the meat completely. This will ensure that the meat stays nice and moist. I'm going to add about six cloves of garlic. Finally, I will add my spice slurry to the top, making sure that it goes in every nook and cranny. I will fill the pot with water and cover it with a lid. And just before Shabbat on Friday, I will set my oven at 250 degrees Fahrenheit and I will put it on the Shabbat mode. Then I will put my dafina in the oven and and let it cook until we're ready to eat it for Shabbat lunch. For the desserts, our traditional Moroccan desserts after a meal on Shabbat is to take nana tea or herbal mint tea with some Moroccan cookies with our homemade non-dairy ice dessert. But this week, Leah wanted to share her new twist for a Shabbat dessert. Can you guess what she wants to do? Let me know in the comments below. Leah will use non-dairy whipped cream, 
I always have to check two times at the store to make sure it is not the non-dairy coffee creamer because it does not give the same results and they have the same package. <laughs> After pouring the whipped cream, she adds four eggs one at a time, making sure that there's no blood spot in them because otherwise it would render the egg non-kosher. And if you want to see how we verify our food to make sure that it is kosher and bug-free, I will leave the link in the description box below and the link above. And on a side note, if you prefer not to use eggs, you can easily use egg replacement and I will leave an alternative in the recipe as well. Then she's gonna add some sugar. She will add as well some vanilla extract. She will mix everything with a hand mixer on low speed until everything is fully incorporated. Once that it is fully incorporated, she will increase her speed to high and she will continue mixing the topping until it forms stiff peaks and it will take about 3 to 4 minutes on high speed. She will transfer the mix to the molds. These are the best molds I found. They are not expensive and they are super versatile. I will leave the link in the description box below for them. Once all of the forms are filled, she takes a frosting spatula and will take off the excess. She will then gently tap the mold on the counter to remove the bubbles in the ice cream. Then she will add the ice cream sticks and will put it aside. She will repeat the same process for the other mold, but this time she will add some decoration on top. During the week we would dip these non-dairy ice pops in melted chocolate and I absolutely love how easy this non-dairy ice cream is. I often make it in a larger batch with different flavors like coffee, caramel swirls and I will leave the recipes for these flavors too in the recipe that you can find in the description box below. I think our Leia did a fantastic job. What do you think? Let her know in the comments below. The veal has been cooking now for about 20 minutes, so I will add 3 quarter cups of checked dried apricots. I will also add half a cup of checked prunes. They are absolutely optional, but they do give a terrific taste to this amazing dish. I will sometimes substitute the prunes for raisins or almonds. I mix everything and because the sauce is still quite liquidy, I will let it simmer uncovered for about 10 to 15 minutes until the fruits are getting softer and the sauce starts to thicken. Then I will put it in the oven for 30 minutes at 375 degrees Fahrenheit. While our tagine is baking, I will finish my salads. For my eggplant salad, I will transfer it to a glass container, add some honey, some parsley, cover it and put it aside in the fridge until we're ready to eat it on Shabbat. For the carrots, I will make a simple dressing with olive oil, lemon juice, parsley, garlic, salt. I will mix everything and set it aside in the fridge. For the beets, I will cut them in thin slices and I will drizzle them with dressing made of olive oil, salt, pepper, cumin, sugar and parsley. For my second smaller eggplant, after removing the skin of the eggplant, I simply add some green onions, a small cube bell pepper, vinegar, garlic. I mix everything and set it aside until we're ready to eat it on Shabbat. For the garlic confit, I simply add some spices and I adjust the salt. I put everything in a mason jar and we will eat it on Shabbat on hot challah. For the bell pepper salad, because the bell peppers have been sweating for a while and are now completely cooled off, I can remove their skin like a charm, thank god. This trick to remove the skin of the bell pepper was given to me by my friend Linda and it has been one of the best hack I have to peel bell peppers, but maybe you have another tip to peel the bell peppers? If you do, please let me know in the comments below. I will cut the bell peppers in strips and I will reserve a few of the red bell pepper strips on the side for the salad cuite or matbucha. I put all the other strips of bell peppers in a glass container. I will add garlic, honey, salt and lemon juice and store it in the fridge until we're ready to serve it on Shabbat. Finally, the matbucha or salad cuite is completely cooled off and I will add my reserved bell peppers in it. I will also add some honey to balance the acidity of the tomatoes. 
I will add some hot paprika to give it a little kick, but it is absolutely optional. I adjust the salt to taste, I mix everything and it will be put in the fridge until we're ready to eat it on Shabbat. Finally the meat is ready, I will plate my meat on a bed of couscous on the bottom part of my tagine pot and I will still not reveal who broke the top of my tagine, but if you want to guess please let me know in the comments below. I'm curious to know who do you think did it. I hope you had been inspired by this Moroccan Shabbat prep and I would love to know which recipe was the most yummy looking for you. Thank you for being here, it means the world to me. Know that in my book you are simply amazing because you are always ready to learn and challenge yourself. If you're still with me until the end, please write in the comments. I love Moroccan Shabbat, so I know I was not alone. And if nobody told you today, know that you are loved and you are enough just the way you are. Until next time, stay safe, stay blessed, and don't forget to from it up. Find luck like a bet.